device is necessary. Most often, animal blood will work just fine. Chickens, dogs, goats. But sometimes, as now, only human blood will suffice. Hear that? That's how I know. That's Jesse James Tarrington, amateur filmmaker, jewel thief, dabbler in fairly benign white magical rites. Still, overall, a pretty decent guy. I really don't want to kill Jesse James Tarrington. But, for this time in particular, as long as the blood is human blood, it doesn't matter who dies. After all, blood is blood. That's Mr. Needles, sorcerer, extortionist, mass murderer. Mr. Needles once poisoned an entire central Washington town after being shortchanged for a pack of Slim Jims. Deviousness aside, what really bothers me about Mr. Needles is his impressive control over certain levels of reality. Watch this. It's fucking scary, dude. I'd much rather kill Mr. Needles. But, in the end, as long as the blood is human blood, it doesn't really matter who dies. After all, blood is blood. We're wandering around the vast wheat fields west of Spokane, looking for the perfect haunted house to use in a zombie movie when we become lost, or so Jesse James Tarrington and Mr. Needles believe. We stopped to shoot this dust devil. A few minutes ago, it was just a few feet away, dancing across the roadway, swirling topsoil and debris, but we didn't stop in time, and I missed the shot. That's Jesse James Tarrington again, the one I don't want to kill. He's missing the shot as well. Is all I want in this prison it up. We stop and check out a few abandoned shacks and homesteads, many of them with some cinemagraphic potential, many that most people would think perfectly acceptable for a zombie movie. But Jesse James Tarrington says they're not quite right. Just as I knew he would. Later, Mr. Needles, who I'd much rather kill, becomes perturbed when I question him about the efficacy of hacksawing through the tie rod of the Rosalia Sweet Breath of Jesus Community Church's band bus causing it to careen off of a cliff and burst into flames in the middle of an improvised rendition of Onward Christian Soldiers. Mr. Needles offers no rebuttal, but instead asks if we can see the distant flock of birds flying near the distant grain silo. Yes, yes, Mr. Needles, Jesse James Tarrington and I both say, yes, we see them. The birds simultaneously change directions and smash in mass into the building, sounding like a short blast of machine gun fire, leaving glistening globs of blood and feathers sliding down the dirty white side of the silo. Mr. Needles just smiles. Jesse James Tarrington spots an old building, and Mr. Needles suggests we go check it out just as I knew he would. As we wander over the hill, 
Mr. Needles seems to perceive that something is amiss. Perhaps he senses the remains of his twenty-seven, or is it twenty-eight predecessors decomposing beneath our feet? Perhaps he senses the horror of their final moments, their agony, their screams, and most of them far more innocent than he. Perfect, Jesse James Tarrington and Mr. Needles say. Yes, I say, pretending to gaze upon the house for the first time. Perfect. So far, everything is going according to schedule. You're a brave man, Jesse James Tarrington. Mr. Needles yells to Jesse James Tarrington, saying that he doesn't have a good feeling about this, and that if he can smell death from this distance, perhaps we should question our desire to explore. I explain to Mr. Needles that he probably only detects the carcasses of rodents or other small animals that often litter forgotten structures such as this. That's all. Nothing more. Mr. Needles accepts this explanation just as I knew he would. Don't go into the basement, Jesse James Tarrington. How the hell do they not hear that? Mr. Needles to join Jesse James Tarrington and me in the house. We take a few shots of the interior. Nothing special. Mostly cutaway shots to be used in Jesse James Tarrington's movie. Jesse James Tarrington tries some kind of artsy fartsy shot with Mr. Needles. But nothing special. Mr. Needles takes a shot from a bottle of wine which, unbeknownst to him, I have laced with a small amount of an animal tranquilizer known to cause hallucinations in humans. When it comes time for Mr. Needles to die, this will serve to heighten the terror which tends to enrich in the sacrificial blood. I allow Jesse James Tarrington to sip a little too, so to make him a bit more compliant when the time comes to tell him what must be done. I take some as well for, well, just for the fun of it. Just a few minutes ago, a large rat scampered across the top of the stove, stood briefly on its hind legs, and twitched its front paws at me in an aggressive manner. But I was distracted by a noise in another part of the house, and I missed the shot. Jesse James Tarrington is setting up another shot. If only he would wait a few hours, he could shoot Mr. Needle's severed head on this bottom shelf his mouth and eyes propped open with twigs. On the shelf above, his severed hands, as if someone just said, stick em up. On the top shelf, I don't know, a bouquet of flowers, or perhaps a rusted bucket filled with his bowels. I haven't decided yet. Mr. Needles says he has found nearly all of the necessary components to perform an experimental spell of some sort. This concerns me somewhat, but Mr. Needles will not elaborate. With the two of them occupied, I slip into the basement to make any necessary preparations. This way, Mr. Needles, I'll say. Watch your step now, I'll tell him. It would be a shame if you slipped and fell to the bottom of the stairs and rammed a shard of that glass down there deep into your temple. You have to see this. Th you won't believe this. Look. There. Over there. I'll direct him. Atop the makeshift altar. Look. Real close, Mr. Needles. Closer. Closer.
episode. And then... And then, sometime shortly after sundown, Mr. Needles will awaken to a room illuminated by a small bowl of burning fat. He will rise just as the bats begin to circle and make their way out of the small window, which Mr. Needles will be too weak to crawl through for his lack of blood, oozing from the twenty-seven, or is it twenty-eight, puncture wounds throughout his body. He will stagger about, sprinkling the floor with what this evil edifice so desperately needs, and the horrible moaning will stop. And just as Mr. Needle stumbles and falls for the final time, a surprise, something completely unnecessary except for my own pleasure. He'll hear me click the button on my cassette recorder, and the last thing Mr. Needles hears will be... Now it's time for witchery! Ready witches? One, two, three! Double, double, toil and trouble, making witches brew! Round about the pot we go, adding to the stew! A dash of this, a splash of that, and some of these things too! I am Newt, and Joe of Prague! Hold on back, and tongue of dog! And how about a great big dog of slippery, slimy goo? But not yet. I check on Mr. Needles, concerned that he might be up to some deviousness with his experiment. This way, Mr. Needles says, watch your step now. It would be a shame if you slipped and fell on your face, causing your nasal cartilage to snap and pierce your brain. You have to see this, he says. You won't believe this. Down here, atop the makeshift dissection table. Here, look, Mr. Needles says, look. Real close. Closer. 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 Mr. Needles explains that this is the final ingredient for his spell, which he claims will enrich in us all. I tell Mr. Needles that I need to go out and talk to Jesse James Tarrington about a particular shot that I see he must be planning. Nothing else. Just talk to him about a particular shot. That's all. Nothing else. I tell Jesse James Tarrington everything. How our powers will be greatly increased with the proper sacrifice. How the 27, or is it 28, others were needed to quench this house's awful lust. How blood must be spilled. How Mr. Needles must die. Jesse James Tarrington listens intently, but says that I should be very careful. Mr. Needles' powers are strong, and that he believes that Mr. Needles' experiment will enable him to read a person's thoughts. Even now, says Jesse James Tarrington, there he is. And even now, there he is again. And that I should be very careful. Yes, I say, Mr. Needles is strong, but my powers are stronger. Perhaps Mr. Needles can read your mind, I tell Jesse James Tarrington, but he cannot read mine. We will both benefit greatly from the spilling of his blood. But I don't think you understand, says Jesse James Tarrington. Yes, I say, yes, I do understand. Mr. Needles is strong, but my powers are stronger. Play along as if everything is fine. Everything is going according to schedule. Leave everything up to me. Still, says Jesse James Tarrington, I don't think you understand. We go back to the house and check on Mr. Needles, concerned that he might be up to some deviousness with his spell. Mr. Needles says he has completed his experiment and that I have to see this. You won't believe this, he says. Look, he says. Closer. Closer.
set of pans on a shelf, my heart and lungs, stick them up, my blood, bucket of bowels, my testicles in a jar, puncture wounds, sacrifice, my liver in a coffee can. Something's not right. That is so black metal. <laughs> Jesse James Tarrington and Mr. Needles have gone into the basement. They have seen something, they say, on the makeshift altar. Something not human. And they have heard something, they say. <laughs> They have heard three things they wish they never would have heard. Don't go into the basement, Jesse James Tarrington says. Ghosts, says Mr. Needles. No such thing as ghosts. must go into the basement in order to return to schedule, in order for his blood to spill, in order to quench this house's terrible lust. Mr. Needles yells to me from outside the house, saying, you should come back out right now, and I'm concerned about your safety, and if you continue, you are going to hear three things that you wish you never would have heard. But I'll prove to them that it was only their imagination. Just their imagination. That's all. Nothing more. I'll go into the basement. I'll show the tape to Mr. Needles. I'll prove to him that nothing is amiss. something on the makeshift altar, but I was struck on the back of the head with a large board, and I missed the shot. I try to rise, but I'm too weak from the lack of blood oozing from the 27, or is it 28, puncture wounds throughout my body. This doesn't look good. That's the first thing I wish I never would have heard. Mr. Needles, the third thing I wish I never would have heard will be something very special, something completely unnecessary except for Mr. Needles' own pleasure. A surprise. Now it's time for witchery. Ready, witches? One, two, three. Double, double, toil and trouble, making witches brew. Round about the pot we go, adding to the stew. A dash of this, a splash of that, and some of these things too. Eye of newt and toe of frog. Wool of bat and tongue of dog. And how about a great big gob of slippery slimy goo? Ew. 